Dave, I believe your son Drew became a pro for a while. Is that right? And yeah, your, your other son was a skier? Yeah, Drew was a uh, – he could climb like a deer. He, uh, he, everyone's on Strava, you know, Strava this and Strava that. We, we have lots of pro cyclists and super uber triathletes here in Boulder. And there's kind of one sacred ride. That's a, it's about a 5k climb. It's, it's anywhere between about four to 7%. And it goes up to a little town called Jamestown. Drew holds the fastest Strava record. I mean, you know, all the pros have tried to break it. And so I can probably say as his dad, I and mean, he, he was very, very strong on the bike. And that's, uh, but he had a lot of injuries. He had several stress fractures and he fractured his back right before um, Ironman South Africa, uh, three days before the race. And then that was it. He had to fly home. So he was always in rehab. So he's a fire firefighter now in Utah. <laughs> we have big fire seasons here in the States. And uh, so he's doing that. My other son uh, was a totally different body. Drew's a real wispy looking guy, uh, still can climb running or cycling. Ryan, my other son, was a power oriented guy. He he goes in the gym and he can vertical jump. Like, I mean, it's staggering. He does pull ups all the way up and totally different uh, body type. But he, he was a Nordic skier. Tried to make our Olympic team at one time. I have a daughter as well, and she's was an amazing runner. One day she said, I'm never going to run again because I think she got tired of her jock, jock-like jock brother and dad. <laughs> so, and my ex-wife was a, uh, she almost made the, the Olympics in 50 meter free. So. So, yeah, I guess the kid would have to be doing something slightly active. Well, <laughs> it wasn't a prerequisite to be in our family household, but it's it certainly by model, um, <laughs> we were both doing it. My, my ex, she lives here in Boulder and she still swims. She swims with my squad and, and uh, my, my daughter is, uh, she does yoga. That's what she likes. She was a dancer. So, she, you know, she's got a, a few other uh, tools that are well beyond her athletic potential. And I believe your sister too, right? taught swimming uh, my sister taught swimming as well yeah excellent well thank you guys for your time i hope uh i hope we didn't take up too much of our uh over here in singapore our precious uh saturday morning uh, i probably yeah. deprived everybody of their workouts so uh if your coaches are mad you can send them my way um <laughs> the day is still just unfolding for all of you okay my <laughs> Friday night here and and uh, yeah, I was tired before we started, but you guys have kind of enlivened me. So thank you. Really appreciate your time, Dave. I really appreciate the opportunity. And I know everybody here does as well. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Thank, thank you, Dave. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you. Thank you much. I want to show I want to show you Very much. before we get off here, okay? And I don't show I don't have stuff like this because I give it all away, but people I've been asked this question. I keep it right behind me. It's the 1980 Ironman. That was the first one that I did. I know a lot of you weren't born then. Uh, that was the first race that I won. <laughs> it was, Jeff, you raising your hand. Um, it was owned by Nautilus, Nautilus Strength uh, Equipment at the time. So I have this trophy back here. It's kind of falling apart. I'll show you. So this is the this is the trophy and it's missing the l right there the not the nautilus shell goes something like that and can you see that okay and if you could read that placard on there that's can you read that at all no well, i'll read it i'll read it to you it says nautilus triathlon 1980 champion uh men's um division 2.4 miles swim 112 mile bike 26.2 mile run. So this is one of my cherished items that I still have. And I, I had my 1980 bike in my office. It was hanging out here and the Boulder Museum wanted it, which I'm going to get it back because when people would see that, they'd come into my office and look at that. They'd say, you didn't actually race on that thing, did you? I mean, it's like a dinosaur. I mean, it's heavy the wheels are heavy the, you know, there's no aerodynamics it was decades before the technology that we see now and you know i've got a hot bike now i've just got an old body how old were you when you did that race 
How old well, are you? Could, you could Google that, Joe. You're not very smart. I thought you were a smart guy. Well, I'm, uh, I'm talking to you, so I might as well ask you straight yeah, up. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm being, I'm being kind, of, kind of tough. I was 26. I just turned 26. So, um, okay. yeah, so I'm 67. You're, you're 20 years older than me, so you're exactly 20 years older than me. <laughs> yeah, born in 1954. Uh, yeah, so that, that the early years of the Ironman, 78 and 79, it was on Oahu, um, 80 on Oahu. So that was my first year. And then it moved over to the big island where it's been in uh, 1981. So when I did it that first year, you know, every, everyone was kind of totally blind on a, a bad word to use. They just didn't really know what was, what were the expectations of getting through this long day? And a lot of people kind of treat it as a survival skill. And I just said, well, I'm just going to race this thing. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'll race it as hard as I could. So it was a, you know, it was a, a very fun day, memorable day. And um, I actually went back for a fundraiser for Challenge Athletes Foundation, Bob Babbitt, who's been in charge of that particular program. And my two boys did it as well. And um, Rudy, who's kind of been a poster child, who had a, uh, he had a, uh, had a, a problem at birth and they amputated his legs. And, and I'm sure a lot of you have seen him. He, he was para, Paralympic gold medalist, amazing guy. He's in his, young, in his 30s. So Rudy, my two boys, we did Ironman sort of collectively together as a fundraiser, which was, which was very fun. So that was the last time I did the race. <laughs> it was about 10 years ago. Can I ask a question, Dave? If yeah. you were to go back now pre-pandemic, and you would do a race, which race would you choose or which one was your favorite race besides Kona, <laughs> maybe? Uh, what would I do? I, you know, that's a good question. I, you know, I like St. Croix. I didn't really do very well there. I liked the people. I liked the, the culture in St. Croix and it was, you know, very lively and festive and yeah. um, such a pretty, pretty island and a, a tough race. It was kind of a half distance. Um, I, you know, I enjoyed traveling. Um, when I went to uh, Noosa, I, I, I enjoyed that. And the Gold Coast yeah. and Australia was amazing. So I think I'd probably, I, I certainly would travel out of this country. I don't really, I'm not terribly enamored by Houston or some of the big cities we have here. So that doesn't really intrigue me, but I, I don't know, Carl, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, the there, you know, there is a history of the, of the races, New Zealand. I, I like, I, I went there on my honeymoon, but that marriage didn't last. So, but it sure is a nice country. And I've been there a couple, <laughs> a couple times. So, um, yeah, I, I would travel overseas. I'd probably, if I could race again and I had a, um, this is going long and, and there's, this is a whole different discussion, but I, I had a heart arrhythmia and it's become very prevalent. And I know Jeff is familiar with this, but the arrhythmias with athletes, endurance athletes, it, it's outrageous. And there was a, uh, a physician that spoke at the Ironman medical conference. I talked, he was from France and, you know, we were talking about all the cyclists and we see them at a younger age. So I, I had atrial flutter and atrial fib, which are, and I have both procedures done, but it, it, it's affected me for the rest of my life. Uh, some people were able to get around it. So my stroke volume is minimal and it feels like I've got this um, anvil on my chest. So I, I'm, I, I'm still crazy when I try to exercise. You know, if I see someone down the road on the bike, even with my coming back off a broken leg, I say, I've got to catch that person. <laughs> or in the pool, I want to stay with the fast people. You know, I just, I, I, if I go too hard, I sometimes feel like I'm going to implode. So it's a problem that they sit, you know, one of the distinguishing seeds of this is, and I've used that word several times, is um, athletes just going long. So you're not getting the stroke volume out of blood that you pump per beat that causes this big perfusion of blood, which has sort of a cleansing action, which is uh, kind of diffuses. So people just go long and the heart rate compensates for the load. So the high intensity interval train is really key to maintaining good heart health and don't just put in kilometers or every day. It's interesting. We have a place in, in, uh, in Pyrenees and we were there a couple of years ago with my husband and then I have these people climbing. I'm not fast, but very fast, they're climbing very fast. And I was like, man, how do they do that? Every age, woman, man, and they had the e-bike. And I'm like, I want one of those. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, those and e-bikes are very popular. They like hotcakes in France because they can climb. At, they used to climb when they were younger, and now they climb all the time, and it's their passion. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, people always say you're going to get an e-bike, and I said never. So, yeah. They're, they're yeah, I think it's a hot. Yeah. Pretty, pretty amazing. I got a big ego, so I can't let myself lower my oh. standard for an e-bike. But I see, I'm, I live on a hill, and I see, you know, these people just, you know, with great music on, and they're just going up the yeah. hill at 40K an hour. And I think, wow, that's amazing. They're climbing fast. <laughs> yeah. Keep those guys off Strava. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah we got to validate those. That's right, Andrew. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's um, probably uh, as much time as we should take of everybody's days. Uh, yeah. Thanks, right. everybody. Thank you very much. Awesome to yeah. be a part of. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you, Steve. Have a good day and evening. Yeah. Everyone. Yes, thanks. You guys get out and exercise, all right? The night, the day's still young. <laughs> all right. Bye. We'll see you. Thank we'll you. see you all. All right. Bye -bye. Good day. Yes. Bye.